Hi, hello, good morning everyone. My name is EJ and I am back again with another narrated art time lapse video for us to take a look at and hopefully learn a thing or two from. Uh, so yeah, this is my jam. Uh, I pretty much do this twice a month. Um, kind of just release a narrated art time lapse uh, for giggles and whatnot. So yeah, <laughs> fun times. So um, today we're taking a look at an illustration that i did for the daily spit paint group in facebook uh again and for the ones who are not in the know daily spit paint group is a great group to join it basically they post prompts daily four prompts to be exact um for you to choose from and you have 30 minutes to do an illustration <laughs> it's a very very tough time constraints but it's a great exercise to start out my day i typically try to do this as often as i can i've been kind of slowing down on it lately and i kind of feel bad about it and i definitely definitely need to start um being active in that group again so yeah but for this particular uh day which is way back last year january of last year the prompt for this particular day or one of the prompts for this particular day was uh, grass roof and it's a very interesting concept I've never really come across grass roof before I mean I've kind of seen them before in in movies and whatnot um, Lord of the Rings comes to mind uh, the Shire uh, where the hobbits live they all have grass roofs if I'm not wrong um, maybe I'm misremembering that it's been 20 years since that sh movie came out but uh from what I vaguely remember they do have grass roofs so the concept in itself is not really entirely completely new to me I mean I have seen one or two before um but drawing them is a pretty unique experience just because I just never really thought about it before so uh yeah I thought it was an interesting thing to do and whatnot um, but really was the most interesting thing, uh, aside from the whole grass roof being such a unique subject to paint, is this little thing that I kind of came up with that it was just randomly in my head. And basically the idea was to have some form of concert going on on top of the grass roof. And so obviously that's what the illustration is. There's a girl uh, sitting on top of the roof, just having a blast, singing. Uh, a song of some sort and she has one lonely audience or maybe not so lonely um, but obviously the audience is very very amused and so whatnot so that was one of the things that I really find interesting in this composition is just this whole unique event that is going on not only do we have a unique setting going on but there's also this unique event going on which is a concert on top of a roof <laughs> so not entirely unheard of i mean the beatles did pull that once before so um so yeah and the other thing that i love very very much so love about this particular illustration is a very specific composition in itself um so obviously i was doing this whole top down kind of point of view you know uh like the viewer is kind of looking down into the scene and it kind of looks like someone's backyard in all honesty is what it looks like is what the setting is obviously but the unique thing is that instead of like drawing other people's backyards which is what i would typically have done i just decided to leave everything blank so we have this you know just random blue hue on the right on, on the left side and it's just completely negative space and i'm not gonna lie man this is probably the most favorite thing of mine in this particular illustration I, I i just thought it was cool and just because i found it so cool that i ended up doing like a much longer speed paint the one we're watching right now is just a three 30 minute speed paint that i did for the daily speed paint it's about to be done it's about to be finished you can see me just roll through this illustration as fast as i can just to have something finished right and as soon as I'm done, obviously I turn it in, whatnot, yada, yada. And then later on that weekend of this particular week, right, 
I ended up taking this particular illustration and developing it some more. So I think it's been another, what, three or four hours? So something like that. It's definitely less than five hours. That is my hard rule for all my speed paints. I do 30 minute speed paints and then if I like something, then I'll do um, a three to five hour speed paint to develop it some more. Um, that's been kind of like my workflow and if I happen to really really like a particular speed paint some more and I really want to further develop it then that's when I do my full render illustration which takes about I don't know anything above anything between 7 to 30 hours uh, so yeah it's a very super developed piece is basically what ends up happening and I just keep working on it until I'm fully satisfied with the piece but as for these that we're watching, they're they're all just really quick uh, sketches slash speed paints just to have something down and just to kind of have something really cool to look at. So, but yeah, this 30 minute speed paint is almost done. I mean, we could look at it right now and we could see that it's practically finished. I think this is pretty much what I turn in. And then, <laughs> um, yeah that it was done because this part that we're taking a look at right now is basically my setup for the three to five hour speed paint that I did whenever I develop it further um, over in a weekend. You could see me take the original as my background and basically I'm going to use it as a basis to draw things on. So the very first thing I did obviously is to uh, set up my vanishing points so instead of me just winging it like i did for the 30 minute speed paint i have a little bit more structure um this time around so i did some vanishing uh points and some perspective lines to kind of help me get an idea of where things will be when i finally resketch this whole scene uh, and I'm obviously re-sketching all of the characters. A lot of the characters have a uh, reference that I use from pixels.com. It's a great site. It's one of my favorite sites to use for photo references. Um, the, the lady slash singer slash guitar player is a combination of different pictures that I found from pixels.com. Um, this particular pose that we're taking a look at right now is originally just one photo, right? And it's such a cool, unique little post. So I pretty much just copied the pose. I thought it was really cool. Um, but in the end, I didn't like the fact that we couldn't see the girl's face. Um, I thought that it's kind of important for us to be able to see the character. So I ended up finding another reference of a girl singing and kind of ended up resketching the whole face and then using that face and superimposed it on this uh, guitar player that we're taking a look at and whatnot. So yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, that girl is obviously a combination of many different uh, photo references. This guy, however, the one that I'm doing, the audience, the robot audience, uh, is just pretty much just straight up from my imagination. Uh, so yeah, I just drew, pretty much drew him straight from my mind. I didn't really use a whole lot of reference from him. I did have a little issue, I do believe, with uh, the perspective slash um, his stains. Uh, I'm not even really sure if I recorrected it or not. It kind of looked like uh, he's leaning far too back. And so I think I re-edited him. Uh, I'm trying to remember. It's been a while back since um, I've taken a look at this. I guess I, I didn't. I guess I just left him as is. He looks unbalanced right now. He looks so unbalanced. Uh, so yeah, I'm not quite sure if I change him or not. Um, but anyways, the characters are very much a finer sketch. As one can see, I obviously spent a great deal of time on them because they're kind of like the focus, so I wanted them to look good. As for the scene in itself, you could kind of see that I'm just basically just kind of winging it you know i'm just kind of just like oh, i'm just gonna draw a bunch of stuff and make some pretty garden looking thing around this grass roof um 
a small place. Um, so yeah, uh, the one that we're taking a look at, by the way, the, the structured slash architecture slash uh, building we're taking a look at, it kind of denotes this whole tiny home um, vibe to it. Uh, I'm not really sure what my train of thought for coming up with this particular building is. is. When I look up grass roofs, there's a lot of references I look at, and I do believe that one of the references I took a look at kind of has a very similar structure. So I decided to keep things simple like that, honestly. And if I'm not wrong, I think that photo also has uh, the perspective on it, inspired me to do this particular perspective as well. Um, but anyways... I wanted to keep the building simple. <laughs> I thought the building just needed to be simple and it turned out to be great that it was simple because now I could fully develop this whole garden scene that is just really wickedly awesome to look at in all honesty. So yeah, you could see me do my uh, quick sketch all around uh, the backyard. And then as soon as I'm pretty much done with the sketch, I'm going to obviously combine all my sketches into one. And then I'm basically just gonna just rehash the same process that I did on the 30 minute one where I did the quick sketch and I laid down some quick colors uh, using my random mech brush. And then as soon as I lay down the colors, I smudge everything into recognizable shapes. This has just been my thing. And then as soon as I have uh, the blended base paint, basically, basically my whole process is to try and come up with a base paint that I could work on. So right now I did a quick sketch and you can see that some, um, some parts need to have colors like the garden needed to have more green and obviously the character that we're taking a look at and need to have more color. So you can see me add some colors on there. And so basically I just spread all the colors around just quickly. I don't spend a whole lot of time on it. Uh, I do concentrate a great deal on the values. So at some point in time after coloring, I go back with some multiply uh, or I multiply, I go back with a brush set on multiply and, and I also go back with a brush set on color dodge to kind of just brighten things up and then darken some shadows and whatnot. And then of course I do the whole smudging thing to get to a base paint. And then as soon as I get my base paint, that's what I basically do all my details on. Um, my detailing is a three-step process that I do throughout my illustration. Um, the first step is basically I delineate my edges, which means I make my edges sharper so my shapes read clearer. I accentuate the shadows. Uh, so if the shadows need a little bit more darkening, I darken them. And then I add highlights. So I do this basically, this three-step process basically all throughout the photo slash illustration. Uh, and I just do it over and over again. And then, yeah, until I finally get my final painting so I do everything in one layer most people try to separate all the layers um, I don't in all honesty right now I have multiple layers going on you can see them in the lower right uh, but this is obviously because I'm still in the initial planning stage as soon as I'm done with the planning stage I merge them all into one layer so this is really I do that right before I do the whole smudging thing so uh, once I start doing the smudging thing, all of that is basically in one layer. So, so yeah. Anyways, um, let's just take a look at the video for now and see where things go. Uh, so yeah, enjoy the show for now.
So at this particular point, I am close to finishing uh, the detailing of the background slash the garden. Um, uh, so right after this, I'm pretty much going to start concentrating on the characters. Uh, and of course, the characters deserves a little bit more attention. So you'll see me zoom in a little bit more when I work on them versus the way I did it with the background slash uh garden setting i pretty much constantly stayed as zoom out as i can to keep everything kind of loose um again like i mentioned i wanted to keep this as much of a uh, speed paint as much as possible so i really just wanted to just have this loose very gestural very impressionistic feel to the whole thing and you can see that i pretty much pulled that off for the most part um the garden came out very very nicely having that initial sketch the 30 minute sketch that worked out very very well because i basically just painted over it really i basically was just i just ended up just basically adding details on that very first initial sketch and so yeah that worked out great 
uh, really, and pretty much I, the main thing that I pretty much just have to concentrate on finishing are just the characters because, of course, the characters um, were different from my initial sketch. My initial sketch, they were pretty much just very loose, um, pretty much just a silhouette of a character for the most part. Well, with this particular illustration, obviously, they're a little bit more drawn in, so... Uh, you'll see me spend a little bit more time on them and just concentrate on them so yeah but anyways yeah just going through my own critique of my own artwork because I typically do this I just go over some uh, aspects of my illustration and I talk about like what's a success and what's not um, in general I just love the setting I, I love this piece uh, I guess that's the only thing that I could really say about this whole thing um if i have to summarize my overall feeling about this whole particular piece is that i love it i really really think that the whole setting came out great the whole environment came out great i thought the characters were really cool um it might have been better if there's more characters to kind of just really denote this whole like wow she really is doing some form of co concert of some sort you know like i think that might have been cooler if there was a bigger audience but in the same time just having this two people in his garden by themselves kind of looks like they're very it has a romantic thematic to it you know uh, whether or not i intended for this to be like a romance kind of angle story kind of deal i didn't really have it in my head I was just kind of just going with the flow and just kind of going with the image and just kind of just, you know, coming up with a cool image, which is what I typically do when I'm painting. I'm just really just concentrating on making it look good. As for the narrative, it is in my head because I love narrative pieces. That is my thing. That is what I typically do. I almost always will have a narrative to most of my illustrations is just my thing, right? Um but yeah uh as for the particular narrative this particular piece it wasn't so much in my head uh i i didn't really have a clue as to what the exact narrative was and so um yeah now that i'm talking about this piece i kind of thought about this whole having more audience in there i think that would have been absolutely cool if there was a bigger audience rather than this one but it's still cool either way, regardless. I, I still think it came out great. I love the tree in the background. I love how, you know, I it's pretty much mostly in shadow. And that the few leaves that are in direct um, contact with the sunlight is pretty much the only one that has any kind of form of color information on there. I think that's just really, really cool. It's just predominantly silhouette-based painting. I think that's absolutely cool. And again, what I mentioned, just the composition, <laughs> having those two empty negative space, I just think just makes this whole piece just come together. I just absolutely love it. It reminds me of this illustration I did called Between a Rock and a Hard Place. And in that particular illustration, it's basically the same concept. There was just two empty spaces between the left and right of the robot. And that just kind of just f makes this whole juxtaposition of two triangles meeting in the middle of sort. I mean, you could say like the triangle, the, the tree is kind of like an inverted triangle meeting the triangle of the triangle, triangular shape of the backyard um i mean you can mention that and you could say that so yeah it just <laughs> it just makes this really cool composition how i came up with that with leaving it blank how i thought about just leaving it blank or what made me think of leaving that particular air blank i don't really know what inspired me to do it i just love the fact that i did because <laughs> it looks really really cool again composition wise i just think it's just absolutely cool so yeah but anyways this illustration is pretty much done you can just see me just concentrate on the girl as we speak um i'm just basically working on her 
as fast as I can. I kept her shading simple too. As you can see, she's pretty much just, you know, the light color and then like the shadow color, which is really cool. She's just very, very simple. And I'm doing a uh, value check. That's why I kept turning on that one layer with with the black color in it. It basically turns everything into a grayscale image and it just, yeah. Just kind of gives me an idea and all my value information. So yeah. But yeah, this piece is pretty much done for the most part. It's looking really good. I just love how everything's coming together. And I'm just working in this girl, just adding some final touches. Uh, I just now <laughs> realized that I decided to give her some ripped jeans. That's a cool little detail, personally. Oh wait, no, I didn't. I changed the whole ripped jeans look. Yep, I did. That's the reason why I didn't remember that. So initially it was ripped jeans and then it ended up just becoming regular jeans, which is fine. I mean, it works, it looks good. And then of course, after I'm done with this girl, I'm going to start working on the grass around her slash leaves around her. And I just realized that that's kind of really a gene because grass roof supposedly to know that the whole roof is covered in grass. And obviously I'm just have all the grass kind of just localized on her. It's really cool though. It kind of makes it look magical where she has like the superpower kind of making things grow around her by just singing, you know, I don't know. I mean, that could be the narrative that just kind of just came up in my head. Wow. Thinking about that just kind of is cool. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I added those leaves. That's really cool. And a pop of color because we got to have color, obviously. So, yeah. And, yeah. Pretty much done. Just adding some final touches, looking at it from afar, doing my funnel checks, just making sure everything looks cohesive from afar. It's a good way of checking uh, overall composition. So, yeah. But that's it. That's the end of my illustration. Thank you guys for watching this with me. I hope you guys learned a thing or two from it. I will catch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.